AMD's Infinity Fabric looks like it requires a little too much power. What's up guys, I'm your host Snows and this is your boot sequence. And then tech did an incredible job at analyzing the new AMD CPUs. And they covered something that is pretty interesting about the Infinity Fabric. So besides the latency, the main thing they focused on here is power consumption. And it seems like the Infinity Fabric consumes a lot of power. At idle or at low core activity, the inter and intra connect can go as far as to consume half of the power of the CPU. The reason why I bring this up is because the Intel variant known as Ringbus or Uncore consumes way less power in comparison. Why is it so important? Well, for most of us, it's not, because if we were to buy something like the 2990WX, power consumption is probably the least of our concern. But for the future, this means that AMD might stop here in terms of core count and focus on optimizing the Infinity Fabric layers. This also means that the war on cores is probably over. Intel will probably catch up AMD's core count at some point in the future, but the next optimization for Team Red will probably be the Infinity Fabric not only lower its consumption, but also get the latency in check. And as we've seen from many generations of CPUs, power consumption and heat might be what is preventing higher clock speeds. Now I have a question for you guys. I didn't know if this subject would interest you since it's pretty nitpicky and complex, although I know some of you guys probably understood most of it, if not all of it. But is this kind of really in-depth news interesting to you? Let me know down below. I'd love to get your opinion. Then we have some leaks about the next gen NVIDIA GPUs. <sighs> Honestly, the leaks are so left and right right now that I'll just post this picture up and say that I think this is possible, but leaks are leaks and the actual info will be revealed soon enough. I mean, especially this generation, the leaks are everywhere. We thought that the next gen would be based on Volta, then Ampere, then Turing, back to Ampere, and now apparently it's Turing, but it has amazing ray tracing capabilities. And now there's this Titan RTX, and the nomenclature for the GTX series is going to change to RTX for the 80 and 70 series, and we aren't even sure if it's the 2000 series or the 11 series. So I'm just gonna stop and let it happen. I mean, we're only a week away from the Gamescom presentation anyways. Sorry about the rant. Then we have Google's DeepMind, which keeps doing more and more. Its newest system is learning to diagnose diseases in the eye from a 3D scan of the retina. This kind of tech really puts a new perspective to medicine, in my opinion. I mean, when you think about it, in a future with AI in hospitals, that would mean that the decisions aren't made by doctors anymore, but by the AI itself. I'm pretty curious as to how you guys react to this. Would you rather have an AI diagnose you, since technically it could review far more cases from older patients than a doctor could in its entire lifetime? Or would you rather have a real person in front of you examine and diagnose you? Personally, with all of the stuff that I went through with hospitals, I'd rather have an AI take a look at me than a doctor. What about you? Next up, in gaming, Doom Eternal was shown off last week and it looks like it's going to be incredible. Not only did they add all new layers of mobility with the grappling hook shotgun, but the fast-paced gameplay is even more, well, fast-paced. The new lore looks like it's going to bring some interesting maps to the game. We also get a dash ability added, some pipes that you can swing on, and some new guns, you know, Doom stuff. Also, online players can now invade your campaign as demons, sort of like Left 4 Dead, but Doom style. I mean, Left 4 Dead didn't really do that during the campaign, but any it's not important. I personally skipped the 2016 Doom, but I don't think I will skip this one, especially if it has a VR version like Doom VFR. What about you? Did you buy the first Doom and would you buy the second one too? If you want to watch the full presentation, the link is down below. Then we have some info on how Fallout 76 will deal with what I call annoying GTA 5 players. I don't know if you remember, but I stated in a previous video that the reason why I stopped playing GTA Online was because I couldn't stay alive in a server without someone coming from my head with a rocket launcher. Well, it seems like Bethesda is going to remedy to this by using something similar to the rogue system in The Division. A bounty will be placed on the attacking player and his location will be revealed, but if the player being attacked fights back, then it's considered fair game and all of the junk the loser had will go to the killer. It's pretty cool. And now to answer a question from you guys, and today it is, what's your favorite Smash Bros character? I mean, I like a lot of them, but my favorite is definitely Ness. The floatiness in his plays, the, the powerful back throws, the, 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 the beautiful. 
What about you guys? Who's your main in Super Smash Brothers? I'm curious about that. And that concludes the video for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop a like. You guys have been killing the likes lately. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I honestly didn't expect it. It's like 500 per video. That's pretty crazy. Don't forget to click right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. And right here to watch last week's video. That would be Friday's video. So right here, free content, right here, subscription to the channel. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Stay frosty.